Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Abby with Abby Reviews. And this is going to be my review of Clickbait Season 1, Episode 2. Now, um, last we saw, the cops was opening up the trunk of the van that they found to see if the boy was in the back of the van. Because the video had reached the 5 million hits. Lord, please don't let this... It would seem like he wouldn't be dead in the back of the van. Because that then... Unless the rest of the show was like, try to figure out what the hell happened to him. But we're going to jump into it. This is going to be a Netflix and Chew. I have ordered some lunch from Potbelly. I don't understand. I asked for light lettuce and tomato and light onion. And they took that to mean don't put any on my sandwich. But okay, it's fine. Uh, so if I come back and I'm like mid-chew, just, just know I'm enjoying my food. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so man's wasn't in the van. The uh, news people are all out there. Everybody's like, "Where is he? Where is he?" Ain't nobody. Don't nobody know nothing. So they get back, and they're like, "Now it's actually a big thing. It's a big deal." They found it's. They feel like it's not a hoax anymore. He's really missing. This is really happening. So the detective with the pushback hairline. Starts running the case. You two do this. You two do that. Blase bloom. Do the boo. So the cute detective. Is like. Well I know I'm just in missing persons. But I would like to help. And he was like. And somebody said oh the wife is here. He was like oh, yeah when the wife is ready to go home. You can give her a ride home. Otherwise go sit down. So the detective is the cute detective is sitting outside watching them talk to her through the window of a conference. So while the cute detective is looking through the window, he is on the wife's social media scrolling through her pictures. It's a bunch of pictures of her, her husband, her kids, you know, her and her wedding dress, stuff like that. And he looked like he all in love and then he's staring at her through the window. He it's something weird is going on. I don't know. It may have something to do with this cop, but he's weird and something's happening and I'm not exactly sure what. Once again, I say this missing persons cop is being real weird, but I think I know a piece of why. Um, apparently, him and the sister had hooked up at one point, and she lost her phone, and they just never were in contact again. Or he asked her out on a date, and he felt like she blew her off because she lost her phone. Whatever. But they're at the house. His passport is missing. Um, And so... They are try at they're asking for their family's phones to see if they can't figure out where the hell this man did this. Okay, so the detective was randomly roaming the house, looking at the people shit upstairs, and he hears like the buzzing of an alert, and he goes into the oldest son's room, and he's like, "I already turned." He's like, "I heard an alert." He's like, "I already turned my phone in to you guys." But he's hiding something behind his back. He's not good at it. Of course, he's a child. It's a uh, old iPad. And he was like, this is my dad's old iPad. I'm using it to track the search. And he's like, what search? And he's like, there's this app. Excuse me. Called geonicking. And it's people. You see the people, dots moving on the line. He's like, they searching for my dad. And when they finish searching the area, they mark it off. It's clear that he's not there. And he was like, okay. He was like, the little boy's like, people are, are fucked. He's like, why would you say that? He was like, look at the comments. And they say crazy shit in the comments about he probably already chopped up $50 if you find his balls. All kinds of crazy shit. And he goes, okay. So he, he leaves. He's going back to the station. He downloads the app or he shares the information from the app to his cell phone. Before he goes and tells who the lady in charge about the app and stuff. And he was like, he said to her, they have a conversation about he's been trying to get into homicide for the last couple of years. And she was like, yeah, I know a lot of people are trying to get in. She's like, but clearly somebody is on your side because the family has asked you to be their liaison between them and the police. And he was like, really? And she was like, yeah. So you get to stay on the case. So he goes into the office where everybody else is so pushed back. He gives the tablet to 
Detective Hairline and says, "You, I found this at the house. Your team missed it. And so, they were talking about going to interview the best friend, Matt, who works with him at the sports comp at with the missing man at the sports complex and he was like oh i know matt i can go with you he's like how long have you been on and he was like 20 hours he's like go home we can't afford the overtime so clearly there's contention between detective hairline and and the cute detective but i don't know i feel like the cute detective may be in on these whole shenanigans something is not sitting right in my shine and Okay, so we found out that cute cop is Muslim. I don't know why that's relevant to this story, but okay, fine. And he goes home. He well, he goes so he goes home and he talks to his parents. He's like, "Oh, your sister's like you're famous." One of the family members want to talk to him about getting a discount on their tickets, and he's like, "That's not how this works." His mama's like, "Why you ain't got the promotion to homicide yet?" He's like, "I told you I'm working on it." But then he gets up because he got a text or something. And so he's like, I got to go back in. And he asked his dad for a map of Oakland. Now, they at the house with the family. And the wife has now has to go outside. They want her to make a statement. And so she goes outside and she was like talking to a kid or send my husband home. My husband is not the man you think he is. He's a loving, kind person. I love you. Come home. Child. I don't, then the reporter. See, this is why I don't like. This is why I don't like. The people. reporter had the nerve. The audacity. The unmitigated gall to holler out at her. Ma'am, do you think your husband is still alive? What is, oh wait, what, what is wrong with y'all? Child. Okay, so after the little press conference, the cute cop is in his car. He's got the app and the, the map of Oakland, and he's marking off spots. The sister jumps in his car, and she was like, my phone is it was it's not broken. She's like, well, it was, but I fixed it. And she plays him the message that her brother left her the morning that he disappeared. And she left him the phone, and he was like, is this going to be okay? Are you okay with this? Which didn't make any sense. She was like, yeah, I have nothing to hide. So, he goes to the sergeant and plays the message off the phone um, for her. And then he's like, uh, the sister and I, we were connected. She was like, connected as in had sex? And he was like, no, we messaged each other on a dating app. We never actually met in person. And she was like, well, can you be objective in this case? Like, if we have to consider her a suspect... Will you be able to do that? And he was like, yes, absolutely. And she was like, okay, fine. No problem. That's going to cause a problem later. With pushback hairline, I can feel it coming, but let's get no, into the rest. Didn't I tell y'all? Not 10 seconds after he come out of the sergeant's office where she was like, it's not a problem. It's fine. He come out the office and one of the detectives blows up. Woo, woo, that kind of whistle. At him, and one of them blows him against. He's like, okay, I don't really. And then you see pictures. Stana superimposed his face on some bodybuilder's body, and there's pictures from his his dating app profile strewn all across his office. And they was like, ooh, swipe right, Jefferson. So this is what you're doing with the information that you have in the middle of an active case. This is what we're doing. This man's life is on the line. We don't know if he's dead or alive. Somebody has snatched a man off the streets and talked about they're going to kill him. Y'all have already passed the 5 billion view deadline. But this, y'all... <laughs> okay, so... Uh, key detective, once he sees all this shit, he runs up on Detective Hairline. And he was like, what is your issue with me? What is your problem with me? Like, what's the, what's the, what's for real? What's your deal? What, what's what's going on? What what it, What is it? He's like, you got it. If you you big man, you the big man. You got something to say. You want to say what it is, but you don't like people like me. You ain't got the fucking guts to say it. Detective Hairline says you're not a team player. You arrogant. You hold on to information and think this case is about jumping 
um, this is a career opportunity for you to get a, a promotion. And I am the senior officer. Never speak to me like that again. Detective Hairline was in his feelings. Jesus, fix it. All right, so they get... Well, after he goes to punch the air, the cute detective goes... So he they found the crime scene where he was taken. So they know they found his bike. They found a syringe, which probably knocked him out. To get him in the van, they got van tracks. So he goes to the... He goes to the people's house. He goes to the family house. And he goes to knock on the door. And he who answered the door? I guess he wasn't expecting it. It was an older black woman. It's the wife's mama, uh, Miss Ruby. And so he goes and he sits down and he talks to them and tells them that they found the site where he was taken. And she was like, uh, and is that going to help y'all find him? And he's like, yes, that'll help. That'll definitely help us find him. So he takes her. He's like, can I speak to you alone? And he takes her out to the back and he plays the message. She's already heard this message. Um from Pia's phone because Pia's already played it for her and he was like do you know what they were talking about and he was like have you met Pia he probably wanted to apologize for what happened the night before and he was like do you know what he meant by things oh. happening he was like do you know what he meant by that and he was she was like no and he was like are you sure he's like are you and your husband experiencing marital difficulty and he was she was like have you are you married and he was like yes I am which how are you on a dating site in your man? Okay, fine. Uh, so she's like, we have people have marital issues all the time. It doesn't mean something was wrong. And he was like, Do you know where your husband is? He like flipped on a switch on her. She's like, no. Ain't that your job to find where he is? Get out of my house. At this point, you've pissed, get out of my house. You have just burnt the brick. Get out of get get out. So he gets put out of the house. So he goes over to Pia's house. And he was like, uh, Sophie told me that you got into a fight. What was it about? She was like, oh my gosh, she told you that? She was like, it's a stupid oh, brother or sister. Pia tells her that oh, the day after her birthday, he came to her um, job to check some bru He had bruising on his ribs. He said that a basketball player at his job elbowed him, but he didn't want her to tell the wife so and she was he was like when did that happen she was like march the 16th and he was like that's helpful then the sister gets a tech uh she's been following this geo nicking app and somebody said that they found him so she was like come on let's go can you drive and so they drive over to where they said they found him it's a bunch of people with cameras and stuff looking over like uh where the rocks go down to the beach next to a bridge and she jumps out and she runs over there child it's a dummy with a picture of the boy's face on it people was like oh i want to take a picture i want to see i want to see yeah, and there was ignorant bastards with cameras including vince who's a little high school boy who helped find figure out the van situation is taking pictures talk about can i get a selfie with you blah they got her on they live on instagram doing the very most when the least will do she, and she's distraught because she thought she was gonna see her brother's dead body like it's a lot it's a lot and people don't give a damn they just for their own entertainment everything is a game okay so the cop takes pia back home and she was like you know the first thing my brother said to me last thing my brother said to me was get out of my life what if that's the last memory that i have of him and he was like we're gonna find your brother alive and so she gets out the car and matt the brother's best friend is waiting for her and they're having a conversation and the cute cop is looking like he's like but no that's my toy i don't talk to him no. he watches them go upstairs and he looks jealous and i'm thinking nigga you married what the fuck is your problem but click to the next uh scene and he's coming out of the mosque and apparently his ex-wife and his son is standing outside they're not together anymore and he was like oh my god and he sees his son and he gets picks him up and he gives him a kiss and she was like what are you doing here and he's like i'm waiting for baki what the fuck is a baki apparently baki is her new man and they talking co-parenting shit and drop him off next weekend because Baki is taking us can we switch weekends Yellowstone he was like and then he feels the need when Baki shows up 
and his and his son grabs his hand son so they can walk away he talks to his, he's so when he says goodbye he says you know i love you right i always love you forever and ever amen and he's like yeah dad i he's a baby they don't get contacts he watches this what should have been his family walk off and he's sad Poor little Tink Tink. Poor little Tink Tink. Can we get back to the fact that there's a man missing and could be dead? Okay, so after the cop sees his what should have been his family walk slowly away, then they show him going to his sad, lonely man apartment, and he eats some Honey Nut Cheerios, and he take his ass to sad, lonely bed. And so the next day he gets up, he has some intuitive leap. He goes into this bar, and he asked the man, how long back does that record? His camera records. And so he went back to the day that his sister said his brother, her brother came in there talking about he had bruised his ribs. And they see he got into this fight with this big, tall black guy. And so he brings Pia in to show her the video. And she's like, I don't know who that guy is. And she was like, will this help you find him? He was like, yeah, we're going to bring him in for questioning. And it absolutely helps. She's still distraught. They like, in the office. And Detective Hairline is giving him shit as usual. And so they're talking about the search area and trying to find him. And somebody said, well, we're really just looking for his corpse because he's pretty much, we pretty much know he's dead at this point. And so he takes the map that he's been using with the app to check off places that have been cleared. And he was like, if we check off the residential areas, the places with heavy foot traffic and, and what's been cleared on this map, Tummy out all 2020. Uh, what year is this? 21? Yeah? Whatever. Y'all know what I mean. Uh, so they said, he's like, okay, this could be a good idea. And he was like, and if we find him, does that help me? And he, and then the detective hairline is like, everything for you is a, is an opportunity for you to jump into this department. You don't never change. You really so find yourself. They're searching in the woods. They're searching. They're searching, and they he 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 separates from the group that's searching, and he sees a group of people. I guess they're from the app and shit, and he scares them out. He's like, they're like, oh, it's five oh, it's five oh, when they run off, and so he goes to see what they were looking at because it looks like there's some white shoes down there in the water and it's a body and he turns the body over and it's the, it's the man it's nick the missing man so he's dead so now they got to tell the family and we got to figure out what the fuck happened to this man has he been dead this whole time well he can't because they made a second video with the he killed somebody so we'll i don't know i have so many more questions This is a lot. Okay. He has so to go and tell the sister that he they found him and he's dead. And she closes the door in his face and she breaks down hyster well, she's not hysterical, but she starts sobbing, you know, grief. And so my question is, because he's outside and he can hear her crying, and then he's distraught and crying. What is you crying for? You didn't know this nigga. What is you crying for? So he distraught and hysterical and crying and he get the shower. He's still crying and then he walks into the office. He has made it into the homicide department. Him finding the body and his help with the case has gotten him a promotion. So um, he goes, as he goes to sit down at his desk, one of the other detectives is like, oh, we're going through the wife's socials. We're just crossing our T's and dotting our I's. And he's like, yeah, I can do it. It's fine. He's looking through the wife's socials to see in the pictures. He scrolls past one picture where the lady is standing there. And there's this tall black guy standing over her. And it's like they're having a conversation. And she was smiling at him. And his back is to the camera. But he has on that same sweatshirt that the husband, the tall black guy who was in the bar video with the husband, they got into a fight. He's wearing the same sweatshirt. It's the same dude. So, that is how the episode ended and him coming to the realization that the guy in that picture on the wife's social media is the same guy who got into a bar fight with the husband in, back in March. So, I don't know if that's her brother and he 
was like, you stop messing with my sister over my sister, I'm gonna bust you up. Or if that's some nigga she was fucking, but why would he be on her social medias? I know we be savages, but we don't be savage like that. Not what we doing. No. Yeah, we'll that was my review and recap for Clickbait Season 1, Episode 2. Like, comment, and subscribe. This is a Netflix limited series. Did I say that already? I don't think I said that this time. Um, so if you want to follow along, please go to Netflix and get caught up. And I will see y'all on Wednesday for episode three. Peace.